Before we get into curves for color, it would be useful for you to know some general concepts that relate to color. These are not absolutely essential, but if you have these in the back of your head, it's almost like having the dimmer analogy in the back of your head. You have something, some basis for how does all this stuff work, and it's good to refer back to. I find that most people will have seen the concept of sending light through a prism and coming out the other side, it turns into a spectrum of light you know, different colors. That's what this is supposed to represent, but I'm not an illustrator, so. <laughs> well, in your image in Photoshop, every image you ever open in Photoshop could be represented by being made out of only three colors. And those three colors are red, green, and blue. Right. And everything you've ever seen in Photoshop or everything you've ever seen on a television uh, can be, and not just can be, is being represented out of red, green, and blue. If you've never seen it, grab a really powerful magnifying glass and just stick it on your TV set. You will see that you see red, green, and blue dots in no other colors, unless you have a, some other brand added, added yellow dot. I don't know why, but, uh, but all of your TV sets, they create every picture you've ever seen out of various brightness levels of red, green, and blue. It's just the dots are so small your eye can't focus on them, and instead it looks like a full color image. But any image, I can just go over here and pull out the red, the green, and the blue like that. And usually behind the scenes it's doing that, and it's just doing it uh, in an area that most people don't look at, which is the channels panel. Channels is where you would see red, green, and blue listed, and all the changes you're actually making to your image are happening there, because that's what your image is made out of behind the scenes. Now there's another concept that is useful. Here we have red, green, and blue, and let's see what it looks like if we have a balanced amount of red, green, and blue, where we don't have more green than red or blue, we have the same amount, and we just get them to overlap. See all these weird colors and stuff, but let's get all three to overlap in equal amounts. Look at what happens when all three overlap in equal amounts. Do you see down the middle of this? They're shades of gray. If you ever have a balanced amount of red, green, and blue, or red is the exactly the same as green, it's exactly the same as blue, you have a shade of gray. And that is a key concept in performing color correction because we look in our picture for things that should be a shade of gray. And if they don't have a balanced amount of red, green, and blue, whatever one of those colors you have more of is contaminating your picture. It's too red. It's too green. Whatever one's too high. Or if it's too low compared to the others, you don't have enough of that color. But once you get them in balance, the area that you're looking at is going to be a shade of gray. And you'll see how that works when it comes to color correction.